This video is all about the cervix and specifically, can I use a menstrual cup if I have a tilted cervix or a menstrual disc? And we're gonna address both of those in this video. Hi everyone and welcome to the Period Nirvana channel. My name is Kim Rosas and I am a reusable period products expert. So on this channel, you're gonna find all types of topics covered, but all of them in the reusable period product space. In this video, we're actually gonna be talking about a tilted cervix and how that affects using menstrual cups. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe for more content like this. If you are new, I wanted to mention that one way you can find the right menstrual product for you is by visiting the quiz on periodnirvana.com. It's something I spent a lot of time developing and it's a really accurate way to guide you into the right period product for you based on either a few questions or a lot of questions. And that all depends on your experience with reusable products. And if you're shopping for period care, check out my retail store, period.shop. When I tell you that we do a little happy dance every time someone makes a purchase from us, we really do. And by we, I mean me, because when you're a small business owner, we is me. <laughs> I am we. <laughs> uh, all right, so that said, let's get on to the content. The easy, simple answer is that yes, you can use a menstrual disc or a cup if your cervix is tilted. How do you know if you have a tilted cervix or not? Generally speaking, we are not aware. We just don't know these things. If your gynecologist has ever said, hey, you have a tilted cervix, then that's probably where you found out about it. So they might mention it out loud and probably think nothing of telling you, but then when you start using menstrual cups or discs, you hear people say, I have a tilted cervix. I don't use this, or I can't use that, or can I use this, or can I not use that? And then you're like, hmm, does that affect me as well? So obviously one way is just to ask your care provider next time you're in, if you have a tilt, you can attempt trying a feel out and see like, does it feel like it's more this way or more that way or more this way or more that way? Um, that is something you can attempt, but it's harder to detect than just simply finding your cervical height, which you can just do by inserting a finger, doing that, and measuring how far in your body it is. A really cool thing that I picked up on eBay is this, which is the displacements of the uterus, and it works with this model, and both of them are very old. <laughs> when I say really old, uh, I think they're both from the 1960s. And so you can see on the cover, it shows you different positions. One is the antiverted and one is the retroflexed. And when people say they have a tilted uterus or tilted cervix, unless they know exactly what the tilt is, it can mean a lot of different things and how it comes into play with using menstrual cups and also discs, which I do want to mention in this video as well, because using discs with a certain kind of tilt actually does have a bigger impact on whether you can use the product at all than a tilt does with a menstrual cup. With the average cervix, if you are in the vaginal canal and sealed, no matter which way this is going, it's gonna just collect at any angle in the vaginal canal and drip into the cup because this is sealed with the vaginal walls. Now let's put in our first uterus. And this is the one we're gonna be using for this demo. It is a retroflex and it is on this track and this moves up and down. So it really helps you not only visualize the uh, retroflex uterus, but also different cervix heights, which is an exciting part of this model. Instead of it going the other way, we have it pointing towards the back and towards the back wall. The cervix is pointing towards the back wall. Let's again show you with a cup. We'll just pretend that this cup is sealed inside the vagina. It does not matter which angle this cervix is tilted or how like far back or far forward or far up or far down. As long as your menstrual cup is sitting below and sealed, it's going to work. Now, here is where a tilted cervix comes into play with a menstrual cup. When you're inserting a cup, if it is tilted, let's say it's tilted and angled, but it's more to one side than the other. If you're inserting your cup, you can go right past it and that's gonna cause leaks. So if you have more room to one side and you're putting in your cup, you can go right past the cervix, not by much. It's not gonna just bypass the cervix and go all the way up into another part of your body. That's not going to happen, don't worry about that. But it can go up enough that the blood is coming out of the cervix and going right past the cup. So if you've ever experienced massive leaks where it doesn't even feel like you have something in your body, maybe it's because you've actually managed to put the menstrual cup past your cervix. And so when you have a tilted cervix, 
that's more likely to happen than if you don't and your cervix is perfectly average and perfectly centered. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is if you do have a low cervix and a low and tilted cervix is that can come into play a little bit with how the cup is um, situated in your body and either when you're inserting, you might have a hard time getting it into place because it wants to ride up a little bit an angle. Now, this is not going to be the best demonstration of it, but essentially it can angle a little bit more because it's interplaying with the cervix. So if you have a lower cervix, that's more likely to happen. The solution to this could be having a shorter lower cervix cup that doesn't need to go any higher and get as close to the cervix and is more likely to just simply seal below it and stay in place. One thing that I do hear a lot uh, in my messages is that some people have not known they had a tilted cervix and had certain issues with tampons as well that weren't absorbing because they were going past the cervix in a certain way. Uh, so it's not just menstrual cup users that have to consider if they have a tilted cervix or not. As I mentioned, using a menstrual disc is something that's more affected by having a tilted cervix than using a menstrual cup. What can happen is if your cervix is tilted to the back vaginal wall, when you use a menstrual disc, it needs to tuck behind the cervix. Now, when I just said if it's tilted and hitting that back vaginal wall, guess what? You might not be able to tuck your menstrual disc behind the cervix. So obviously the cervix doesn't like staying in place, but you get the point. If it weren't tucked against the wall, it would very easily just kind of go underneath the cervix and scoop. But if it was here, you can see very easily if you're using a disc, you might have serious leak issues as if you're not wearing anything at all, uh, going back to the menstrual cup and going past the cervix, Again, it would feel and look as if you had nothing in your body. It's not that you can't use a menstrual disc if you have a tilted cervix. It has to be a certain combination where it is tilted, angled up, to, up towards the back wall and really close to the back vaginal wall where you don't have room to scoop the disc underneath it. Um, so again, not an impossibility to use discs. I know lots of people who have a tilted cervix, but it's not tilted in that way or it's not so close to the back wall. One technique you can use if you suspect this is something affecting you, at least give it a few tries by inserting the disc down and kind of scooping it. So you're angling towards your tailbone and pushing it down so that it has the ability to go underneath the cervix. Because that Nixit disc is soft, you might need something with a little more firmness to it to kind of navigate through and underneath the cervix so it's not just squished. So that would be something like a Luma, a Cora, which also has a smaller diameter than the Luma High, and the new Hello Disc. And that would be another option as well, because this I feel like might kind of collapse. Otherwise, it's a perfectly fine disc to use, but in that very specific scenario, you might need something with a little more edge to it, a little more firmness. All of these things come in different degrees. So, you know, it might be more this way than this. It might be more this way than this. It might be more this way than that. And again, tilts are so varying that just saying that you have a tilt doesn't necessarily mean any of this is a concern because it could be so very slightly tilted. It doesn't matter in either your cup usage or your disc usage. So the main thing is just to be aware of your cervix. I know it's a weird thing when you start using menstrual cups and discs to now suddenly be so familiar with your cervix and know where it is at all times, but it's your body and it's only gonna aid you in having a better period experience with whatever product you're choosing. Even tampon users might get a little more out of their tampons and understand why something's not working for them when they know more about their cervix. So this isn't a super long video, but I thought it would be really helpful to ease people's minds who might have been afraid of using menstrual cups because they have a tilted cervix or have been told they have a tilted cervix and were too nervous to try. Chances are your tilted cervix is gonna have absolutely zero effect on using a menstrual cup. Now, once we talk about discs, it's a little bit more top of mind because you might have a tilted to the back cervix that actually does prevent the disc from tucking entirely or makes it very hard to tuck. Again, that's something that 
may or may not happen. Chances are pretty low, but it's always good to just be aware of these issues so that when you are struggling with your product, you have some tools to help you figure out what's going wrong and how you can fix it. And sometimes if you can fix it, unfortunately, especially for the menstrual disc issue, it might not be a product you can use. And I don't like saying that as an advocate, but there are definitely products certain people can't use because of their anatomy or because of their abilities or because of um, allergies. Like that's why we have so many different types of products, internal and external. If you're new, make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow me on social media. I am at Period Nirvana on all of the social medias, which includes Instagram, TikTok. I place a lot of educational short clips on those profiles. And you can join the Menstrual Cup troubleshooting group that is part of the Period Nirvana community on Facebook. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. It's so cute. How do you know? I'm like, I'm a little lopsided in humorous. <laughs> For some reason, it's like falling. It's like um, cockeyed. <laughs> uh,